I think we can start our ESEG MBA webinar. Uh, another webinar to, to present some of our partners and some of the uh, distinctive features of our MBA. So, um, and today we have Olivier Vaufray from the World Economic Forum. Olivier, it's a pleasure to have you here again. So, uh, thank you so much. And um, so we will talk about one of the most important partnerships that we have uh, in this uh, ISAG MBA, which is this partnership with, with the Forum, and uh, and how this uh, partnership and this collaboration um, happens, and why in um, why it's so interesting and so distinctive in this program. But first of all, um, uh, I would like just to share a couple of um, basic uh, introductory ideas about our MBA so that you can understand why this partnership with, uh, with the forum is so interesting and fits in a, in a perfect way uh, with our program. So I will just start uh, a brief presentation of five minutes just to set in the stage so that after this, Olivier can explain a little bit better and uh, with more uh, context um, what exactly is the forum? Uh, what is this strategic intelligence platform? So uh, we will talk about uh, scanning strategic intelligence and how this can be really interesting for so many different kinds of people and organizations when you want to think and act about the future uh, opportunities and challenges. So let me just uh, share my screen for a couple of minutes and, um, and I will just um, try to uh, explain a little bit what exactly, um, sorry, uh, what exactly is the ESEG MBA. So ESEG MBA is the, the MBA that uh, from the, the, the ESEG, which is the Faculty of Economics and Management from the University of Lisbon, uh, the biggest university in Portugal. And uh, basically, if we explain what it, it is our MBA, we can say that in a nutshell, it seems like a um, classic um, the usual uh, organization of an MBA. So on the top of the slides, you can see the core courses that usually you can find in all MBAs and also in, uh, in ESEG MBA because we are a program, program that are certified by all international organizations that uh, uh, also validate uh, MBAs around the world. So you have this uh, finance marketing strategy operations uh, human resources and, and so many others. But uh, then if you look, uh, what we, we, we tried to do was to expand the core of our MBA. And this is where in these three areas, this is where you can see the visionary, the innovative and singular approach uh, of, of our ISAG MBA. So you can see the leadership and personal development, a couple of immersive experiences and the strategic streams. Regarding the leadership and person development, I will not explain, but you can see like three layers, a leadership journey and also a personal development plan. And these all go throughout, in a, throughout the entire program. So they are like a horizontal, uh, if we can call also streams of the program that connects also with something which is really important for all our candidates and our uh, uh, students, which is how can we also connect you with the market, not just for those that want to change careers, but also for those that want to see exactly what is happening on the market, what kind of skills, what kind of trends are happening so that they can just come out align also with, um, with the, 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 the market and what kind of skills the um, companies uh, are changing and, and also asking. The second uh, key feature is the three immersive experiences we have. So we have one with the, with the University of San Francisco in Silicon Valley, San Francisco. Another one with the Portuguese Air Force Academy, which is the boot camp that we, it's, it happens usually in the beginning of the program. And then for those that don't know exactly what is happening in Lisbon, Lisbon is becoming one of the most hot spots for entrepreneurs, startups, founders, and uh, innovators around the world. So we are going to offer you an immersive experience in Lisbon so that you can find and talk and interact with some of the most important stakeholders of our ecosystem. And this is curated by Startup Lisboa, which is one of the uh, most important actors in this field in Lisbon. 
But then we have this kind of a, what we call strategic streams. And this is where we try to encapsulate some of the new trends that are happening uh, in business, in strategy, innovation. Uh, and we strongly believe that any leader of the future should have this kind of skills, this kind of capabilities in order to be at the forefront of, of the game, of, or if you want to, to, to manage teams, if you want to lead organizations or any kind of, of institutions. So we have one for Global Futures, in which we have the partnership with the World Economic Forum and also with the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies. Another one on entrepreneurship and innovation with Startup Lisboa and the University of San Francisco. Another one for the technology change, digital disruption and transformation with Technical Lisboa, the biggest and most important engineering school, uh, also from the University of Lisbon. We have a stream on design thinking, strategic design, and strategic agility and operational agility with two uh, partners, with company, a, a design studio, and the Volkswagen Software Development Center. And the last one is one of the most important priorities for our uh, faculty and, and also for the, the uh, exec, uh, executive education, which is the, the, the really focus on sustainability, also on governance and ethics. So today we are going to focus our attention on the global future stream, and in particular with the partnership with the World Economic Forum. So I'm going to ask um, Olivier to just explain a little bit what is the forum for those that don't know exactly the, the size and the, the, the amazing work that you are doing all over the world. And then just to focus a little bit more on the strategic intelligence platform and the partnership that we were able to forge with this MBA. So Olivier, thank you so much again for your presence here. Thank you very much, Paolo. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, I hope uh, I'll see uh, some of you uh, of course, in the future uh, in this course, and we'll be able to go even a bit deeper into this. Uh, but thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I want to start, uh, sorry, I'll just introduce myself. Uh, Olivier, I work in the, at the World Economic Forum, and more specifically sitting uh, in the strategic intelligence team, which is the team that historically has been managing the expert, uh, the network of experts, academics, and experts also from private sector, from government, and have been trying to mobilize those experts for specific conversations that we were having with our key stakeholders for specific projects and specific initiatives. And more recently, a few years ago, we have uh, decided we needed uh, to build something new uh, in a way to aggregate uh, the knowledge that was generated by, by those experts and also make it available to a wider group. So that's what uh, we will be uh, uh, talking about uh, tonight. Uh, but just as a starting point, I wanted to share a, a small quote that I share very often uh, uh, when I introduce this work, um, just to anchor uh, a little bit the thinking here. And it's uh, a quote from John Hegel and colleagues who were looking at uh, trying to make sense of how change takes place uh, in the economy. And basically what they observed there uh, is a pattern that is basically that the edge tends to transform the core. In other words, what they see is that uh, usually what makes uh, people, organization, uh, institutions uh, or industries uh, transform is external pressure. And very often this comes from outside those structures uh, into from the wider edge. And I think that's interesting uh, as a starting point because it puts us uh, in front of a bit of a challenge. I think all of us as individuals working uh, in, in organizations and trying to understand the world um, is that we all have certain areas of expertise, uh, the things we work on uh, daily, uh, but when we look at what John Hegel and his colleagues say is that, of course, this is uh, important, but there is also a need to be aware and to understand and to be able to scan uh, and see what are some of the developments that are happening actually way beyond our area of expertise, way beyond uh, the four walls of our organization, way beyond uh, the specific industries and specific regions or countries we might be uh, looking at. Um, and that's that's been a challenge. Uh, and that's, of course, not something new, but I think it's, uh, of course, uh, becoming uh, increasingly uh, challenging in the current with the current pace of developments and, and also the fact that we can see those interconnections actually uh, growing uh, uh, every time more. And, and that's uh, also as part of that small introduction. I think we can say uh, that this is probably one of the reasons why a lot of those leaders, a lot of the, you know, whether they are uh, leading companies or uh, countries from a public sector or coming from different walks of life, 
were joining us, uh, have been joining us actually uh, in one of our flagship uh, events every year. You might have heard of the World Annual, uh, the annual meeting in Davos um, that uh, starts every year in January. And that's in a way was uh, the, the historical opportunity or platform we have created as an organization so that people could come and actually connect the dots, right? And you would be not only connecting with people from your, uh, from your industry, uh, but also with people that were sitting outside of this. And that we're working on some of those questions that might be uh, you know, in my edge uh, and kind of far remote from the core topic I look at. So really this idea of creating a platform, a place where people could gather and kind of connect those different perspectives, this diversity of point of views, of expertise, and kind of connect those dots to get the full picture. And they've been doing that uh, with us uh, now for a bit more than 50 years. And I would say uh, both in terms of making sense of some of those developments and also in, in a way that that scanning I was referring to, trying to see what is happening out there, what is happening outside of my usual uh, environment so that I understand and I can uh, be uh, prepared but also um, the fact that it's important for all of those stakeholders actually to be in the room, not just to understand what is happening, but also to influence some of these things. Uh, as you know, the word says, they all have a stake in it, uh, in some of those issues, and they all have uh, the possibility to influence that and to improve some of the challenges um, that we could face on some of those different topics that we tackle as an organization. So, so this is a bit, uh, of course, not a comprehensive view of what the World Economic Forum is, but I think in the essence is really to bring those diversity of perspectives, bring those diversity of stakeholders around the table to both understand and also shape some of the major global, uh, regional and industry issues. Uh, and if you look at this network uh, of, of stakeholders, uh, historically, uh, 50 years ago, it started mostly as a business uh, uh, um, platform, if you want, and very quickly added, as I mentioned before, representatives and leaders from the public sector, academics and experts, uh, but also representatives from civil society organizations. And then, uh, and here I'm taking almost this uh, clockwise chronologically, uh, started to add also the, the diverse perspective of the younger generation. So trying to look, for instance, here, what are some of the most active people that are engaged in some of those uh, critical issues we look at as an organization at the local level, created networks of those uh, younger uh, generation, uh, also worked with the social entrepreneurs and more recently also with the uh, startups, scale-ups and, and the innovators here. So really, uh, if uh, again, going uh, and looking at this broader context for the work I will uh, uh, put on the table today, the World Economic Forum has been really in a way in that business of creating those networks, creating those, um, those communities uh, for, for now almost a bit more than 50 years. And as I was saying before, you know, they work together, they meet, uh, they work on projects, on initiatives, they form coalitions, uh, and a lot of interaction and exchange is happening amongst those uh, quite remarkable people in a way. Uh, that are working with us uh, and this uh, on, a, on a daily basis almost uh, we work uh, with uh, almost hundreds of projects uh, we have uh, we are covering 17 industries almost every country in the world um, uh, covering about 250 uh, issues and topics a lot is generated through this work and a couple of years ago uh, we thought we needed to find a way to uh, aggregate all of this knowledge all of this insight into one place uh, organize it in a way that allows you know, our partners to make sense of some of those issues and make it available also to a wider group. And that's a little bit uh, what is behind the work that I will uh, introduce to you today. So the approach for, for that. So, so what I'm talking about now is really from that wide uh, organization that I represent in a way, uh, and now take a step uh, into something more specific, which we call the strategic intelligence platform. And here the approach we have, so that platform that we uh, built to really gather and aggregate all of these uh, insights and this knowledge, um, is uh, the approach is the following. Uh, as you understood, we have those extensive networks, right? So we are, in a way, building on that human intelligence, right? And what those people that we work with are talking about um, and kind of aggregating their expertise on the topics we work with. On the top of this, we have um, a bit later in the process also, uh, developed what we call here the machine intelligence. So basically a way for us to um, 
uh, to automatize uh, the way we gather information and plug it automatically into the platform. What we've done here uh, is establish content partnership with some of the leading universities, leading international organizations, think tanks, uh, and uh, academic research institutions all over, all over the world. Um, and basically this automation allows us to scan through everything that those uh, content partners publish on a daily basis and plugs it into the relevant area on our platform. So in terms of the approach, I think the last part of it, and you'll see this uh, in a couple of minutes, is what we call the transformation maps. And this is in a way our response to visualize this enormous amount of information in a way that we hope uh, enables you uh, and our partner, our users, to make sense of some of those very complex um, issues. Uh, and I will uh, now, uh, maybe I can take just one or two minutes. Uh, Paolo, I don't know if you want to jump in with questions, if there's something in the chat, and then no, I can I, move into the- I, I, will, I, I will just make a couple of questions so that we can also interact with each other, but uh, I just post uh, something on the, on the chat so that it, it is, if there is any questions that you want to make to Olivier, just uh, make it on the, on the chat or on the Q&A, okay? Perfect. So I'll carry on and interrupt me and, and I'll take the question as they come. Um, I'll switch gears now and just show you how this looks like and, and this resource, this strategic intelligence platform we've built so that you get a bit of a sense uh, of what this is. So uh, I mentioned before, uh, it covers about 250 uh, different topics. Uh, we are organizing this in different ways. Uh, a big body of those are uh, countries and regions. Uh, you might be familiar with the competitiveness report, for instance, some of the benchmarking work that we do at the World Economic Forum. So here you will find all the countries that we have included in this work uh, that are covered here. Uh, we also uh, cover the, uh, a bit more than uh, 15 different industries. So these are all industries uh, with whom we work. Uh, we have, uh, if, you are, if you want to think about it as the tip of the iceberg. Behind this, we have projects, we have communities, we have groups of experts. We work with leaders from those uh, different uh, leading companies in these different industries. And, and this is another a part that we, we cover with uh, the platform. We also uh, look at the sustainable development goals. Um, and finally, uh, what we call global issues. Um, I like to call this, uh, it's a bit more of a mixed portfolio of issues. I like to look at it a bit of, as a pastel analysis. You'll find here some um, elements and, and areas that cover more uh, political um, dimensions, for instance, corruption, civic participation, geopolitics, uh, for instance, but also others that are linked to technology, emerging technologies. Uh, you see 3D printing, 5G, advanced manufacturing, you have blockchain, AI and robotics, but also others linked to demographics or uh, more sustainability related or environment. You see, for instance, circular economy, biodiversity or uh, climate change, just to, to name a few. Um, so this is just to give you a bit of a sense of the breadth of the platform and the type of, of issues uh, that we cover. So now just uh, as an example, I thought I'll take this one um, uh, here, the future of energy. So that's uh, just to give you an example. We work, uh, you'll see here, with uh, the MIT and a team uh, of experts from MIT who are specialized um, on these questions. And they help us really aggregate uh, and kind of write this visualization that you see here that we call transformation map. Uh, and here, basically, uh, what it gives you is a bit of an overview of uh, quite a, a wide and, and complex topic uh, that is the future of energy. I think what uh, we're trying to achieve with that uh, in a way is to allow anyone who has not a deep expertise on the future of energy, but that somewhat has to understand it uh, for its work because it's somewhat connected. So let's say to, to build on what I was saying before, uh, this could be an issue at the edge of what you're looking at, but still something you have to somewhat understand. The idea is to uh, break it down into uh, subparts um, and, and understand how this works. So if I look at the future of energy, I would say that some of the key issues in the conversation on the top of the agenda on the future of energy are questions around um, policy and governance. So the, the type of policies that we have around energy and to what extent, for instance, they are supporting or not decarbonization uh, and others. Uh, and you see here a short executive summary that kind of lays out what is this point around policy and governance for the future of energy about, highlights some uh, data points uh, here 
and give you uh, that kind of executive summary of what this is about. So we do that uh, for each of those maps for six to nine key issues. You would see another very important one here is around uh, unlocking energy finance, designing the future of power systems, for instance, accelerating energy access, driving innovation in the energy sector, building resilience, or how some of the shifts uh, coming with technology, but also with new players coming in, uh, are impacting geopolitics around uh, the question of energy. So really, uh, I think here, what is important to, to bear in mind is building on uh, these wide networks of uh, people and experts um, is trying to uh, aggregate all of this and help you know, a non-expert uh, to really have a clear 360 view of something quite complex, such as the future of energy uh, in quite a short amount of time uh, through those short uh, executive summaries. Another thing we, we are trying to, to achieve and convey with that is also to say, okay, the future of energy, interesting, but I am really interested maybe in some of those uh, sub subtopics. So for me here, what is really core to the question I'm, I'm looking at right now, it's really this question around um, energy technology innovation, for instance. So what we want to offer here is also the possibility to go deeper into that and say, what are some of the latest publications, reports, um, that are connected to this question of energy technology innovation uh, and that are connected to the future of energy uh, that are published by some of our content partners. So you could see here some of the latest uh, research and analysis on this, uh, for instance, uh, so that you can basically get uh, additional information on that. You would see, for instance, on green hydrogen uh, being one of the new, uh, new uh, elements here that come to redefine a little bit uh, the field of energy. Uh, and its future, uh, but others. Uh, and, and here are also different ways to do that. So you could go deeper by looking at some videos, some um, data sets uh, that we have on some of these issues, uh, some of the events and conversations that we're having. So here you see, for instance, from January this year, we had conversation around uh, financing net zero transition. And you could see who are some of the people that are speaking there, what are they talking about? Uh, what are some of the projects and the initiatives that are happening on our wider uh, platform and network around those questions of uh, energy technology and the future of, um, of energy. And also who are some of the experts uh, in this area? Who are some of the academics? Who are some of the industry experts and people working also in government that are really looking at some of those questions uh, and that would be interesting also to be scanning in when we have that process of understanding a topic such as the future of energy. So that's just to oh, Olivia. Just yeah. a quick, uh, not not a question, but a comment. Uh, mm -hmm. So what what you you have here is a really outstanding uh, system. Also, it offers uh, or a structured, organized um, way, in a, in a certain organized way, a, a contextual view and a very really systemic view of uh, uh, different kind of topics and elements. So you have like a, 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 a really interesting system connecting different kind of driving forces in a very visual way. Uh, and it is hi highly curated. So we are always listen to the AI and this kind of big data and advanced analytics. At this stage, we are looking to a really curated, credible, high quality knowledge that are really organized in a systemic and give this kind of a contextual view, right? Yes, it's exactly it's exactly that. It's good you mention it. Uh, compared to other platforms uh, that would have maybe similar purposes than we have, here really the stance we we decided to take is really to have that curated approach. And even you you saw before I was talking about the machine intelligence. So here there's some degrees of natural language processing and AI. And here, this is something we leverage, but for a pool of um, content providers and content partners that we have vetted in a way. So we use it to allow us to be much more dynamic and being able to bring more volume into the platform, but still uh, not uh, picking from any type of source, really into some of the defined uh, boundaries that we set. And that are also constantly evolving because we add new content partners. Uh, or, I mean, every month almost, uh, we have about 300 of them uh, no, but that's uh, that's a very good point, uh, Paolo. Yeah, and, and you can also extract uh, these kind of briefings in a very automatic way, right? Yes. Uh, so what you can do here, um, 
what Paolo is referring to is, let's say, you know, that was interesting. Uh, that's something, uh, you know, for, I don't know, for one of my uh, projects that I'm working on with my team is actually relevant. So I can also um, generate uh, here a PDF briefing um, that I can either use for myself, uh, take notes on it, for instance, but also share with, with others. Um, so let's see if, um, if it's loading here. Uh, here, um, so that's um, so. I think you can see that on on your screen. Uh, that's how it looks like. So you can really extract uh, a bit of a static uh, snapshot for the future of energy at a point in time. So now it's been generated here by me today, uh, and I still have this visualization. I can have the executive summary as well as a short uh, summary for each of the key nodes. You would see those key issues that compose the future of energy and also some of the latest knowledge. So the latest reports and analysis here, you could see for instance, something about uh, the, the, the big announcement from China about carbon neutrality uh, here from Bruegel uh, that is looking, looking at and asking the question about the plan to achieve this for instance. So here, I would see this because it's been published here today, actually on the 14th. Uh, if I come to more and extract it again, uh, I will have uh, probably uh, here a different set of, of knowledge and, and it will be uh, updated. So, so that's it. And I think here the, the point is really from a starting point I took uh, that example of energy uh, is this idea if you break down something very complex into pieces that are digestible and that will give you uh, hopefully that 360 view uh, on a quite complex topic quite quickly with the ability to then further dive into uh, some of the related information through reports, through videos, through some data sets, uh, etc. Another important aspect of it, and if we go back to John Hegel, uh, here uh, you see that we can help you identify what is core to a topic like energy. What we saw is that uh, these things are connected and very often influenced by elements that are happening in the wider context, in the wider edge, to take uh, the world, the words uh, of Hegel and his colleagues. So here. Um, I'll show you uh, quite quickly, you could see when you look at uh, driving technology and innovation, for instance, you also see that it is connected to this outer ring. And basically that's a bit of the curation we've done to help you kind of scan through this and say, interested in technology innovation for energy. Um, I might be interested in looking at also and getting a similar briefing actually for hydrogen, right? Um, and here you would see a similar approach uh, you can break down uh, in the major uh, dimensions of it from, you know, what is the place of hydrogen in the energy system? What are some of the opportunities coming from it? Some of the challenges uh, for scaling hydrogen um, and then uh, also the implication on geopolitics and, and the role of this in, uh, for instance, mitigating climate change. Uh, apparently here, this would be quite um, powerful for some of the sectors that have been historically difficult to electrify, for instance. Uh, so long haul trucking or aviation where uh, electrification uh, is a bit more complicated. This seems to represent that kind of new opportunity. So we would find some data and some information about that. So really this possibility not only to zoom in, but also to zoom out and see and navigate laterally between those different things that are in a way part of a broader system. Um, and here- So all, uh, of you, yep. all of these topics that you have on your database is more than 200 topics, I believe now, now currently. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can put all of those topics, or at least the majority of them, in the center of the map and reorganize this constellation of information and knowledge accordingly? Yes, yes, you can do okay. that. That's amazing, that's really amazing. And I'll, I'll just show you, uh, maybe take an intermediary step here before I show you that. Uh, let's say I'm trying, I'm really interested in that uh, question that uh, of this outer circle and the edge of this con the, the map on the future of energy. I want to have a bit more information about that. So I could see here some of the connections, but I also want to uh, use this, we call advanced analytics. So here, basically what this does is that uh, you've seen, we have a long feed of articles. Uh, we have about a thousand articles that come in uh, in the system every day that are scanned by the machine and plugged into the relevant areas. Here, I want to start to get a sense of Maybe what should I focus on actually from that edge when I look at the future of energy? And you see these little waves uh, that would change for different periods uh, you know, on the scale of time here. So I'll just take the most recent one. And you see some of these waves. And basically that shows me volume of articles and publications that 
have been seen by the machine um, as uh, talking about the connection actually between the future of energy and in that case, some of the edge, uh, you know, the points we have at the, at the edge of this map. So that would give me an indication of maybe what should I be focusing on. If I take future of energy, I would see that it seems that there's a lot of conversation and research going on, uh, not on the future of energy, but also at the intersection with the Green New Deals and some of those big plans that are done now by different countries uh, to get uh, greener and to transition to net zero, for instance. It also connects to climate change, of course, uh, to the electricity industry, right? So this is something that is really important when we look at the future of energy, to the question of batteries, right? As a key technology that unlocks a lot uh, with regard to the transition to clean energy and electrification, hydrogen, but also oil and gas industry uh, here, for instance. So that so, allows me- Olivier, Sorry, so you are now just entering in a more AI advanced analytics features of the platform. So uh, I believe that until the first approach that you were explaining, uh, that's say a public subscription, so everybody has access. So our students of the ISAG MBA, they will have access to a premium access in which they will have uh, the possibility to explore these functionalities, right? Maybe we can also um, detail of give a give. So what is that is not, just uh, available to the public and that our students will also have access. This, mm -hmm. for example. Yes, so that's exactly right. Um, we have, uh, you know, because of who we are as an organization, we're a nonprofit organization and we're trying to um, kind of make a positive contribution on some of those issues. We believe knowledge uh, is part of that work. And that's the reason why part of this platform and part of this work uh, we made available to the public uh, for free. Uh, but then we also have advanced uh, features such as the one I was just showing to you, uh, which um, are either available for a subscription individual or that we make available through partnerships with specific uh, organization, in that case uh, with the MBA uh, at ISEG. And that gives any students uh, from the MBA the possibility to uh, access all of those advanced analytics, advanced features. Uh, and maybe after that, we can talk a little bit more how we are also using this uh, in the context of the of the program uh, beyond just giving access to to the students so that's one of the features um, another one uh, that paulo was uh, alluding to is uh, the ability to customize uh, a map so here for instance um, i've just for the sake of the example did a bit of a, a walkthrough right i started with uh, energy and the future of energy so i could go back here um, and say after that exploration uh, I've, I've started from the energy map and let's say there was uh, some elements that were really important to me. So this question of driving uh, energy uh, innovation. Uh, then I used the advanced feature to understand a bit more what was happening in the wider context. And I saw something interesting actually, uh, both, both on, the, on the map, uh, but also in this outer ring around hydrogen. Uh, I'd like to really focus on the opportunities of hydrogen and how this could potentially help uh, mitigating climate. We also saw uh, something around batteries. So I'll also go and explore uh, that map here. And I can, uh, everything you see here, for instance, for batteries would be the inner node of the battery map. Uh, and then you can basically select what you're interested in. So let's say uh, here for batteries, uh, what's important for me here would be um, uh, how this could uh, help actually uh, connect to the energy transition we were talking about. So this is basically uh, an example. It's a bit high level. Uh, we're not going really into uh, the details here. It's just to say that um, after you have that exploration and that scanning around and within the issues you're interested in, we also have the opportunity to uh, just go for the major elements that you are interested in, like here, future of energy, relevant but there's actually one element that is really core to let's say a project i'm working on uh, and then i will go and pick uh, very specific issues from others here uh, uh, you i'll just uh, put energy i need a, an, just an image so that i can save this i can give it the title so energy map is the is like mba i could add a little uh, a description here um, and then I can I can save this. And basically here, this is something that I've saved. I've created it myself. So for now, 
It is something that is uh, only visible to me um, and it's fully embedded in the platform. So I could go back in my library and sit here. Uh, so you see, I took those four different uh, elements. I could generate a PDF briefing of it. Uh, I have all the information for the four elements I have prioritized into this map. Uh, these will get updated as any other elements of the platform. I will receive the latest information here that is published. So if you look at the questions we brought into the map, you see there is something from a leading think tank in India about uh, Indian cities and a shift to e-mobility, which seems quite relevant to the elements I had here, uh, but also the videos and all the related data to this. Um, and still, of course, this is embedded into the wider ecosystem. So when I look at those questions, I can still branch out also and let's say here, see what is happening in the future of mobility, for instance, uh, and, and kind of go back to my initial uh, questions, for instance. So that's uh, another of these, uh, these features that is not uh, available to the wider public and that uh, also uh, any of, of the students at the ESAC MBA will um, have access to. Uh, and is it possible for, imagine that we have created this uh, personalized specific uh, map. Can I share with my team or with someone? Yeah, so you have two ways to do that. The first one is by exporting that PDF, which is uh, updated every time you export it, but then once exported, of course, is, is static. Here, what we have developed a bit more recently uh, is some possibilities for you to share that. Um, and here, what we've, what you can do, for instance, is export a, a public link. So I could copy that link um, and here and, and share it with you. I'll do it uh, here in, uh, uh, I don't have, I can't see the chat. Oh yeah, the chat here. So I could just put it in the chat. Uh, and that means uh, anyone here uh, could go and explore my map. Uh, if you want to go into some of the details, you will be prompted to sign up, uh, which you could do uh, as a free user. So you just enter a few details and then you get the access to it. So you could fully explore this map. Or I could say, you know, we're part of a team. We're actually both working on that project, Paolo and I. And I will um, not, I could share it so that he sees it, uh, but I could also share it uh, with editors, right? Which means we can work together on it and Paolo can help me uh, maybe uh, kind of write that executive summary for the project presentation we have next week uh, to the wider team. Uh, and then he could also help me maybe deprioritize or add some additional dimensions that he might think are missing. So here the idea is both uh, sharing and also uh, a bit more of a uh, asynchronous uh, collaboration around a, a given map uh, from teams or, or, or different uh, people uh, interested in working on the same on the same map. Great. So so that's really. Uh, some of the basics I think that are important to, to share here. Um, I will maybe just uh, share something else uh, that might be uh, interesting for you. Uh, I'll, I'll show it from here, actually. So that's my landing page. Um, again, with the access you would have when, when you know, if you join the, the MBA. Uh, and here, of course, it's a bit of a dashboard. So I have, you know, the different things I am following here. It's customized to me. I have some of the latest articles here that are brought to me and pushed to me based on my preferences, etc. But you'll also see here, um, uh, here upcoming events. Uh, and that's something that uh, we are also offering. Uh, it's not part of the public version. It's for um, the people like, such as yourself in the, in the MBA. You would uh, not only have access to what I've showed to you, uh, but also get uh, additional invitations to some of our virtual events. And here, uh, the, the type of sessions you have access to are in a way, webinars where you will be able to listen and, and hear firsthand in a way from some of those leaders, right? We had recently the Global uh, Technology Governance Summit. So you would hear from some of the decision maker, you know, uh, discussing regulation around some of those technologies, some of the innovators that are bringing some of those technologies to market really early stage uh, and different key stakeholders that are and experts that are exchanging and discussing this. So here, for instance, you would have a subset of those sessions you can sign up to um, and, and, and watch uh, uh, in, with the idea to provide with, uh, in a different way, uh, also with that knowledge that we have in our network and make it available to, to a wider group. So here you will see uh, from here directly some of those um, different opportunities that once you are registered, that you can very simply uh, explore here. Let's say the, now it's in the past, but that's something that's of interest to me. 
um, I can explore actually here, uh, you know, the program every day, what were the session available, for instance, uh, let's say, uh, just to, to give you a bit of a sense, technology governance outlook, getting to net zero, you can see who's speaking there, uh, you can uh, sign up and just make it part of your agenda. And then, you know, you receive the notification, you register and join the day, the day off. So in a way, this, this package um, is an advanced access and it includes uh, what I've shown you uh, on the platform, but also the possibility to uh, get a, a glimpse of some of those conversations and kind of hear firsthand from some of those people that are both, uh, that are in a way shaping these issues. Um, so I think I'll, I'll pause here for now. And uh, I see some uh, orange light. It looks like there are some things happening in the chat. You're on mute, Paolo, sorry. Uh, I was telling that uh, the feedback from 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 the, our uh, attendees is, is it's great. So it's a really powerful uh, uh, platform. And what is really interesting, at least from my side as the executive director of the MBA, is the capability also to interact with you and your team, so that we can also bring things that can be interesting not only for us and for our students, but also for you is the team that has responsibility to, to, to update, to, to change uh, the, the platform. And from my experience with you for the last three years, it's really interesting the way that you are always updating, putting new features, and this is uh, always happening. So it's really interesting, right? And, it, and, it's, and it's true, right? Yes, that's really the, I mean, it's a digital platform. So we have, uh, I mean, the sky is the limit and it's true. It is something that has evolved a lot. Uh, for full disclosure, it's actually an exercise that started a long time ago as an internal uh, knowledge management tool, uh, and then it evolved, and we realized that there was something more there. We started making it available just to a core group of partners, and then we extended this, and as we extended it, and I think uh, also to be a to recognize that Paolo has been a key partner in this and, and the university as being one of the early user in the academic uh, space um, that really helped us actually learn from you know, what, what is useful, what is not, what is missing, get some ideas that we could along the way, of course, integrate and develop. And, and that's something we've, uh, uh, we've, we've got a lot actually from you and from the work we've done with some of the past uh, uh, MBA students and, and other programs at, uh, at ISEG. Okay, so just one question, the final one, we have just um, reached the, the, the limit uh, that, that we have for our webinar. So what, what kind of uh, sources uh, you work with to have this kind of, uh, besides the organizations that, uh, so universities or research centers or faculty or think tanks that contribute directly to the description of these different types of topics, what kind of sources do you use? Sources. So uh, we have, if you, we have teams uh, at the World Economic Forum that have a, a, a special expertise. So we have some teams that only work with specific industries, and they are constantly connected with leaders from companies in that industries with the best experts on those industries. We have teams that look at some of those global issues. Right. We have a whole team that uh, develops uh, the work we do around climate change. So these teams actually internally, they are very important counterparts because that they allow us to uh, identify who are some of the key partners we should be working with for content, right? Who are some of the research centers, the think tanks we should absolutely have there as content partners. They also help us identify some of the experts we should be engaging in this. Uh, and they also help us uh, in the curation work uh, very often we, we work a little bit in trio between the strategic intelligence team, uh, some of the counterparts in, the, let's say, the, the climate change team at the World Economic Forum. And in the case of climate change, for instance, with a group of, uh, of climate scientists at Yale University, um, you've seen before MIT, etc. So we kind of work in trio and kind of use the collective power of these <laughs> brains to really make sure we're scanning uh, you know, additional sources, ad additional content providers, additional experts, and making sure we resurface all of the key points of the conversation we're having with our networks and communities in, on those issues. Okay, great, Olivier. We don't have more time for any questions, but let me just read you a comment from one of our participants. 
So uh, it's Julio. Julio says, okay, what a really amazing and powerful tool. Very important to understand the future of business and be part of that change. Looking forward to learn more and be part of the ZEG MBA, of ZEG learning community. The possibility of using this platform during the MBA and have a premium access is definitely a plus. Congrats, everyone. I'll see you, you all in <laughs> September. So it's all uh, also my words, Olivier. Thank you so much and see you again in September. In, September, <laughs> in the beginning of the program, okay? Thank you. It was a pleasure again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, uh, Julio. Bye, okay. everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye to all. See you in September. Bye.